Hello, everyone. I am Zubit Bulgan. Welcome to my presentation. Today, I will be talking about the use of the design structure matrix during the construction phase of building production processes in Turkey. We prepared this paper with my thesis advisor, Professor Dr. Elçin Filiz Taş. Today, we're going to start with talking about process management. Process is a sequence of transactions starting with an entry and ending with an output. An entry can be new information or raw material coming from inside or outside of the company, whereas an output is a product or service aiming to increase the input's value. Process management is to get an organization to work in a more efficient and more compatible way, creating higher capacity in a shorter time by using new resources or repurposing pre-existing resources. Priorities of the Turkish real estate sector according to decades have changed according to the research of Hassel. In the 70s, construction quality was the most important, but in the 80s, financing was more important. In the 1990s, people started marketing their projects in order to sell them better. In the 2000s, because of there were so many projects, people had to find new ideas in their buildings, such as a new pool or a new entertainment center. But when we came to the 2010s, in order to make a project more profitable, most important thing was how you manage that project. So in order to manage our projects better, we started building process models where we looked into building creation, building construction, and we thought of how to make it more profitable. First of all, we're going to start with agency models that deal with the actors in the development process and their relationships. The first model created in this area was Gerskamp's Fundamentals of Real Estate Development that focused on the relationships between actors and the highest and best use analysis, but did not pay much attention to financial aspects of the real estate development. Then came economic models. Economic models are primarily uh, reflect rents, cost, occupancy, investment yields, etc. So it looks at the economic aspect of the project. Wheaton's four quadrant model uh, is a good example for this. De Pascal and Vita focused on how the four main financial factors in a real estate development project are affected from each other. This model brings together the actors that we've previously saw and the financial market together. After we looked into the actors and the economic models, we started making event sequence models. These models focus on the management and the sequencing of the stages and processes of the real estate development. These models are practical and industry focused and historically are the least theoretical in nature. Miles's eight-stage model came with the idea that the tasks in the development process can be put in a standardized order. This model lists the eight main steps in a real estate development process and tells the developer to evaluate his work at the end of each step and decide if the project should be continued. So, so far we have our actors, our finances, and now we have the order of things. Then came the structure models. The structure models focused on the forces, institutions, and the conventions that organize the constrained relationships in the development process. These models are generally informed by the political economics. So, so far we had the actors, the economics, and the structure of the development. And now we start looking at the surroundings of the project. Kohlhepp's 56 cell development matrix not only focuses on the actors and the tasks, but also considers the exterior factors and how they might affect the project and what the developers should do at each of the stages, respectively. And finally, we come to systems models in which we view the real estate development process holistically and attempt to synthesize and reconcile the practically of event sequence models, the actor's focus of agency models, and the impact of institutions and the power relations of structural models. So we can say that the systems models are a method to bring all of the previous methods together and give us a holistic idea. Bullock and Sullivan's design structure matrix, which views the real estate development process as a whole system and brings together the actors and the tasks. In addition to that, it gives the developer information about their relationships and the information flow between tasks. 
in this paper, we took the idea of the design structure matrix and turned it into a tool that we can use in the construction period of building production. So what is the design structure matrix? Design structure matrix was created by Ben Bullock and John Sullivan. It suggests that a developer always must make education, educated guesses as he steps forward in a project. If he, the guesses are correct, the project would be considered successful. In order to make the developer's oversight easier, the design structure matrix tries to explain the steps to be taken previous to a development stage and the outcomes it would provide. The design structure matrix aims to provide a process management model for developers and lower the risk by defining the whole process even before the project starts. Imagine we can do this for construction, that we can predict what's going to happen and thus lower our risks. The design structure matrix is made of six parts. It's the idea, feasibility, pre-construction, construction, stabilization, and asset management. But at this point, we're just going to look at construction state. So how we read this table is a bit complicated. So we're going to go step by step. First of all, we look at informational relationships between tasks. There are three types of informational relationships, which are dependent tasks. That means that task B comes after task A, independent tasks. That means that task A and task B can be done simultaneously and their output works as one or interdependent tasks, which means that the information that comes out of task A will start task B and the information that comes out of task A B will start task A. So these tasks will need rework at some point. So guide to reading the design structure matrix. Well, how it works is this. As we read the table from left to right, that gives us the information of what tasks depends on what. And when we read it from top to bottom, it shows us what task provides for what task. Let's go over an example. For example, if we take into consideration task 3, task 3 depends on task 1, task 4, and task 6. If we look at what information task 3 provides, task 3 inf provides information for task 4 and task 5. So what is the benefit of using design structure matrix? First of all, it visualizes the whole project in one great chart. It helps to see and predict many problems that might occur in the project process and have precautions beforehand. It's used to sequence tax tasks in the more efficient way and have a work schedule before the project starts. It highlights relationships between tasks and identifies where rework risk might occur. It, revisiting each step with each other makes a developer cross-check his estimations, predictions, and therefore reduce risk. According to Bullock and Sullivan, the desirable level of rework and iteration is unique for each project because the information being generated and the associated risks are project specific. But we will only look at the construction phase of a project now. This is the great chart that the original design structure matrix was built on. I just wanted to put this here so everyone can take a look at it by pausing the video. So how we did this study? We took the original structure of the design structure matrix and we only focused on the construction phase. Then we looked at the categories of the tasks we, we wanted and we fixed them according to the actors. Each task was gone over according to the information it needs and the information it provides. We talked with 25 professionals and academicians from the industry with at least five years of experience and consulted them at various steps of the adaptation. Uh, the model was simultaneously revised according to their comments. So first of all, we changed the order on the category of tasks. 
Uh, there used to be five different disciplines in the original design structure matrix, but for the construction phase, we wanted to divide it into two. We said disciplines that are directly connected to construction will be in blue, and the disciplines that aren't crucial, not crucial to construction, but still relevant to the overall process will be orange. Let's give an example. The securing of the construction loan is not directly a construction task or obtaining a building permit is not directly a construction task these are done by non-construction professionals but if there is a problem with either of these steps our construction will be affected seriously or updating the development budget or updating the market conditions do not directly affect the construction but if there's a change in the market or if there's a change in the bu overall budget of the building, the construction will be affected. The blue ones, on the other hand, are very direct construction issues, such as excavation works, uh, building project infrastructure, building core and shell, rough construction, building interiors, etc. What happened in this chart is that since design structure matrix was built for real estate development and we are currently discussing construction, we needed to add more details such as the details of construction. As you can see, we added titles like excavation works, fine works, or settlement of claims. Then we put the relationships between tasks back in order and put our crosses as we learned in the previous sections. Again, you can pause your video here to look at this chart more directly, but let's read one of the points. For example, let's talk about rough construction. In order to be able to start rough construction, we need design development, acquiring property, excavation works, build project infrastructure and build core and shell to be ready in order to start this task. We also need that the development budget and the market conditions are as usual. As we finish the rough construction, we will get the information we need for building MEP systems, building interiors, fine works, building client requirements, monitoring the schedule, construction inspection, and settlement of claims. So we made some conclusions from the reading of this matrix. One, if most of the relationships are below the diagonal black line, this means that the risk is lower in the project because the tasks are more mostly serially connected. There is no need to for rechecking or rework. Compared to the previous stages, the construction stage is the most is mostly straightforward. Two, when tasks from the two different categories come together, these relationships are more critical than a similar category relationship. For example, if two professionals from blue tasks come together, it's easier to work than a blue and an orange category professionals come together. Three, this chart helps the contractor to see exactly what tasks should, would be affected if a problem occurs at a certain part of the project. Four, it is important not just to think about building activities during the construction stage of the building production, but also constantly be aware of the surrounding factors. The design structure matrix allows the contractor or the project manager to integrate these factors into construction plans. So our final evaluation of the adaptation was as such. One, unclear task distribution. In Turkey, actors and tasks are not always defined clearly, which creates ambiguities in task division. Sometimes too much work is loaded on the incorrect professionals, which increases the amount of risk in construction projects. Two, different timing of tasks. Some tasks are done at different times in Turkey compared to the original order of the DSM. This difference sometimes causes the construction to be more risky or processes to take longer. Four, longer span of tasks. In today's construction industry, simultaneous tasks are a must considering that the less time spent on construction means faster return on capital. In order to do so, tasks are not achieved back-to-back, -back, but some continue at the same time. 
4. Interdisciplinary tasks. In today's construction industry, some tasks are no longer in the responsibility of a single professional category. Most of tasks require more two or more professionals from different fields to come together and work together on a single task. Here are our references. Thank you for listening to us. Have a good day.